Joining me now is the Daily Telegraph's Jonathan Moran with the latest from the world of entertainment. Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Rita. How are you? Red's a good colour on you, my friend. Oh, thank I like the koala shirt. There's a lot happening there. It's for um, Firefight. That... It's Firefight's concert on Sunday, so I'm doing my bit oh, to that is raise awareness. Nice. No, that's a beautiful shirt. Now, the Oscars were on earlier in the week and Natalie Portman was trying to raise awareness as well, but she was using a Christian Dior cape for her bit of social justice activism. Have a look. How did you decide to do this? Um, I wanted to recognise the, the women who were not, uh, not recognised for their incredible work this year in my subtle way. Now, Natalie's brave and stunning uh, uh, activism included embroidering, uh, embroidering, is that a word? Uh, the names of the eight female directors who were not recognised and nominated for the Oscars. Uh, but, Jonathan, I've got to say, like so many celebrities, uh, she's all talk and no action because she herself opts to work almost exclusively with male directors, both as an actor and as a producer. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I agree with the, the fact that she opts to work exclusively with only male directors. Well, she in, only does. in the sense, Only in the sense that there are... I mean, it's a fact that there's more male directors successful in Hollywood. That's just the way it is. Um, I, don't, I don't know well, why that is. she's got her own production company, Jonathan. She actually can hire female directors. She can elevate them. She's an A-list actress, so by just being involved in a project, her star power brings something to it. And then, despite all this, over, what, a 26 year career she's worked I think with one female director other than herself she's directed herself a few times yeah and I didn't realize that I agree with you actually reader again after last week you might be surprised but I mean money where your <laughs> mouth is more importantly I think don't go to the bloody Oscars if you are so angry about it then don't go up the red carpet wearing that dress I thought she actually looked beautiful I thought the cape was lovely and I think the touch of having the names there as a bit of a low-key protest was cute uh, I don't know. I just if there was if there was more but films Jonathan, that women directed that were supposed to be in the Oscars or that should have been voted for, then then they would have been. But I've got to ask you. No, none of the reporters there, all of them gushing, asked her this. <laughs> but uh, there were five directors nominated. Which one does she think was unworthy? Which of the women uh, should replace the five directors? Martin Scorsese, or Scorsese for The Irishman, Todd Phillips for The Joker, Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Sam Mendes, 1917, and the winner, Bong Joon-ho for Parasite. So the question is, if she thinks the women were snubbed because they're women, which yeah. one did a better job which film was superior to, to those directors. And if you're not going to put that out there, then save the activism. You've got to have some substance to it. Absolutely, and I agree with you. The one, I mean, if, if, if her argument is that there's not enough diversity, there's not enough people, you know, they're all middle-aged white men being nominated, then Bong Joon-ho the actually was <laughs> uh, a Korean man. So, uh, and Parasite won and made history for doing so. So it kind of makes it defunct. The one woman who was widely regarded to have been, uh, should have been nominated was Catherine Bigelow. Um, mm. So... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think, I think, that I think I agree with you. I think it was a wasted, wasted opportunity. Um, don't go then. Post on your social media about how the Oscars are rubbish and do that and do that as your protest instead. Well, I say the public, I don't think, like these preachy celebrities telling them what to think because these Academy Awards, the 92nd Academy Awards, got the lowest ratings ever for the event um, and it follows uh, figures that were released early this week showing the feminist flick Birds of Prey getting the worst opening for any film in the DC extended universe, dramatically lower than the next lowest, which was Shazam, which was a bloody disaster. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Have you seen Birds of Prey? I haven't seen it, but uh, do you think the way it was marketed has had an impact on its box office? 
I didn't see the first film, which is pretty embarrassing for me to admit to you on national television. <laughs> um, I should have watched it, but it just doesn't, it didn't appeal to me. I didn't, I wasn't interested in it. I'm not really interested in it. I think Margot Robbie is a little bit overrated. I think she's, she's Ooh, an okay actor. Um, that is but, a bold statement to make about Australia's sweetheart. Yeah, well, cool. I'm sorry. I'm happy to make it. I, I you know, I, I, th I think acting credit should be given where it's due and I don't think she's the brilliant actor that, that she is claimed to be. Interesting. Maybe that's well, why people aren't seeing the movie. Well, there's been a lot of uh, very, very deep fill pieces written about how young teenage boys are staying away because of the mov movie's feminist message. Um, I don't know. I think maybe it's just an average flick and, and, and word of mouth's got out. Now, because there's the women in it and because there was a female director, it doesn't necessarily make it a feminist film. I haven't seen it, though, so I can't tell you that. Mm. All I'm saying is that it just doesn't look that interesting to me. Yeah, I'm not into any of the <laughs> DC, Marvel. I avoid them like the plague. I just don't understand <laughs> the popularity at all. So I think I'm just too old for that. Um, now, just back quickly on the Oscars. Uh, we had Natalie Portman, Brad Pitt, Julia Reichardt, few people making political social statements. But also the Best Actor winner, Joaquin Phoenix, lectured us about the evils of milk consumption. We go into the natural world and we plunder it for its resources. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow. And when she gives birth, we steal her baby. Even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable. And then we take her milk that's intended for a calf and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. Now, Jonathan, mm. it might surprise you, but I actually defended him for that rant, uh, uh, though he has been mocked fairly widely, um, because at least he lives what he preached there. He is a mm. vegan. He doesn't consume milk. He does make some personal sacrifices that live up to that activism. Uh, how did you see the speech, and do you think that it will encourage people to, to think about becoming a vegan? Look, I'm as fickle as the next person. I watched a video on Facebook the other day which showed some horrific scenes within a dairy farm in America and it really horrified me. Now, I watched that and then I was like, I'm not going to drink milk. An hour later, I went to a coffee shop with a friend and I ordered a, um, a, a chai latte or something and I asked for uh, almond milk and they didn't have it, yeah. so I had milk. So I'm a hypocrite, I admit it. Um, <laughs> I agree with you. I think that he uh, is a good bloke for standing up for what he believes uh, and putting his money where his mouth is. I think there's a lot more celebrities doing that than we actually know because the ones that really do it don't actually sing it from the rafters. It's the idiots on social media and the influencers and the reality stars that are jumping up and down saying that they don't drink milk and then we'll see them drinking a milkshake, you know? Absolutely. Well, talking about the idiots uh, making, uh, <laughs> making all sorts of impact on social media, comic Jim Carrey is out promoting his new film Sonic the Hedgehog. And he gave a rather creepy answer to a female reporter. After all you've done in your career and in your life, is there anything still left on your bucket list? Just you. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's it. It's all uh. done now. <laughs> uh, Misogynistic, awkward. chauvinistic, offensive in every term. You don't need to be a feminist or you just have to be a human to go, mate, you're there doing your job, she's there doing her job, and you've objectified her as a female sex figure by saying, I just want you. Like, I just found that repulsive, you're on my actually. Bucket list. Yeah, yeah I, I find that revolting. And she wasn't into it, and you could see it was becoming very awkward. And then he to tells her to own it as if it's some sort of. Uh, uh, something to be proud of, like she's going to wear this like a badge of honour. I don't think so. And yeah, now, Jim I'm, Carrey I'm went ask... down about 20 rungs on my belt for, on my list for that. I think it's just revolting. Well, he's gone completely rogue in my book because he's <laughs> yeah. just uh, obsessed with Donald Trump. He's always tweeting out this vile stuff about Trump. And mm. uh, he's also an anti-vaxxer, which I have no time for. Now, Same. I want to ask you about this fascinating uh, story about actress, activist and uh, one of Meghan Markle's uh, celebrity mates, Jamila Jamil, and whether she's suffering from Munchausen syndrome or some other condition that sees her lying about ailments and exaggerating events... Uh, Tell us about this story. 
So I had to I had to Google this to find out what Munchausen's disease was. To be honest with you, because I'm not as smart as I pretend to be. I'm just a little <laughs> entertainment writer. So I, I Googled it, and it basically means that you're making stuff up. You're making up illnesses, whether mm. that be a physical illness or a mental illness. And this woman, Jamila J uh, Jamila Jamil, has. Um, she's been chased by bees multiple times. She's had multiple car accidents. She was on set with Ollie Murs and uh, and damaged her elbow and had all these a number of accidents. So she's very accident yeah. prone. But a writer <laughs> named Tracy Egan Morrissey has called her out for this and gone looking for indiscrep for discrepancies in her stories yes. to see what is true and what's not. And she's gone online saying it. This has not made Jamila happy. And this is where I disagree with Jamila. Jamila's got a voice and. She She's entitled to it. This wouldn't have happened 10, 15 years ago when we didn't have Twitter or Instagram where people shut people down and they have a voice as a celebrity rather than going through an agent. But Jamila's come out saying that this woman, this writer, is an unhinged idiot uh, and she uh, is, is made these claims because Jamila is, uh, because of her gender and because of her skin colour. Now, I think that's absolutely oh, rubbish. Please. That's the That's only not how. song she knows. That's all she knows. Anytime she gets any criticism, whether it's from Piers Morgan, whether it's from uh, this woman who's just uh, someone who's fairly clever on Instagram, and I had a look at her Instagram and she was clinical. She went through interviews and featured Jamila explaining these supposed events and then she showed the video of what really happened. Uh, one example was this ridiculous story she was telling about... Uh, a swarm of bees attacking her and Mark Ronson. And then Mark Ronson is asked about it and he goes, there was like one bee and there was no swarming, there was no running for our lives. Like everything is just so uh, dramatised that it becomes like uh, ridiculous. And I think uh, good on her for calling her out. Uh, uh, to say it's because of her skin colour is just absurd. To, to call someone out, you can't just say anything negative about someone and say that's because of your sexuality, that's because of your gender, that's because of whatever political party you vote for. It's just she's calling you out. So you can respond Absolutely. to it in a smart way and the smart way is to counter her smart points with your own smart points. But don't just go and say it's because I'm a woman or because I'm whatever you are. It's just stupid. But Jamila's very well uh, versed in those arguments. She was saying yeah. just a few weeks ago that the only reason that Harry and Meghan cop any criticism is because Meghan is black and it's oh. all racially motivated. So Give we've me already strength. heard this song from her. <laughs> yeah, so Sorry, now I'm just last... Uh, we're agreeing again, which is making... Yeah, both like, we're going to go out to dinner, it. babe. When are you in Sydney? Oh, we're going yes. to dinner. <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. Um, now, we had a rather high-profile uncoupling this week with former Australian cricket captain Michael Clarke and his wife Kylie splitting. It all looks very amicable and, and sensible there. Look, uh, Michael's a mate of mine, Kylie's a mate of mine, but I have to say this couple are... Uh, have always throughout their they were married in 2012 so eight eight plus years they met in high school sweethearts and then rekindled their love sometime later they've got a beautiful daughter kelsey lee but what they've done here very smartly i would say is they've gone and planned this whole thing to come out the way it has so there's no juice they've they've sucked the air out of the balloon so to speak before anyone can find anything because um there really isn't anything to find they've fallen out of love they're not together anymore They've got a beautiful daughter. They're going to stay uh, as, as co-parents on this situation. Um, look, I'm sure there's some dirt there, absolutely, in every relationship, mm. my relationship, anyone's relationship, and that makes relationships hard in the public eye. But uh, they've done a very good job of announcing this split in a way that has been calm, considered, and, uh, and, and so far nothing nasty. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's been handled beautifully. Uh, they released a statement and I think most of the media has been fairly respectful in how they've, they've reported this thus far. It's early days. Um, we've been looking they... for dirt, I can tell you. And as I said, they're oh. friends of mine. We've been looking for dirt because where there's smoke, there's fire. There's just no smoke in this situation. The fire's been put out. We've all moved on already. Thank you. Now, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, we'll be reading your latest in the Daily Telegraph.